But if you'll take to heart what the Bible says and know whatever God says about you, that's who you are, people. When we worship God, we are focusing on Him and how magnificent He is. God's kingdom can be manifested right here on earth, all throughout the ministry of Jesus. And God is good and God is good all the time. The Bible says that Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. This because we're going to talk about the soul. Psalms 23, many people can, many people can quote Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Now notice he says he restores my soul. That word restore is different. It's not the same as, um, it's not the same as being a new creation in Christ Jesus where you've been recreated. It's a different word. Restore means to recover, to rescue, to reverse, to renovate, to make like new. He restores my soul. It's different. He's not, he didn't come in. He doesn't come in and bulldoze <laughs> your soul and give you a new soul. You have to restore it. You have to renovate it. You have to have a makeover on your soul. He doesn't, he doesn't uh, save our minds when we get born again. That's why you can get born again and you can still think crazy things and you can still act crazy ways. You, I mean, you, know, you, you don't have to point any fingers, but I guarantee everyone in here even knows people that they say they're born again. And I wouldn't doubt that they're really born again, but they let their mind, will, and emotions control them. And they do things that are against what the Holy Spirit, their born again spirit, would actually be the path and in the, in the behavior in which he would have them to, to operate in. Why? Because their minds aren't saved. It's not born again. It's contrary. Your mind will be contrary to the Spirit of God. It'll be enmity. It'll almost act like an enemy because your mind, wants to, your mind wants to process what comes through your flesh. All right? If I can see it, if I can feel it, if I can smell it, if I can taste it, and then when your body gets that going, your mind begins to process, right? James 1, 21 says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Now, I got good news for you here. This is really good news. He said that the engrafted word, that if we will receive it with meekness. See, we have to receive this word, any word that God has, we have to receive it with meekness without disputing it and understanding that every time he deals with us, every time we hear his word, it's for our good. That same word, I like this, that same word that says which is able to save your souls? What is able to save your soul? God's word. It's able to save your soul. Do you know that word save there is the same as sozo? Let me say that again. That word right there that says the word of God is able to save your soul is the same word that salvation is, which is sozo which means it takes the word of God to deliver our soul, protect our soul, heal our soul, preserve our soul, make our emotions well, make our emotions whole, make our minds whole, preserve our minds. It takes... God's word. It takes receiving God's word. The reason I bring that up, one of the reasons, is because we hear a lot of things. A lot of things go on. 
And a lot of people are trying to deal with things without dealing with hearing the word of God. See, a lot of people have, uh, you know, let's just be, let's just be, you know, Frank. We'll be Kevin this morning. Let's just be Kevin this morning. A lot of people are dealing with a lot of emotional, soulish things in their life. A lot of major, major, major baggage. And yet we have the answer to whatever mental thing that you're going through. We have the answer to any kind of mental oppression. We have the answer to anybody that is suffering with depression. We have the answer for anybody that is dealing with torment in their mind. And that is you have to renew your soul. You have to preserve your soul. Your soul has to be made well. Your soul has to be made whole by only one way, and that is through the Word of God. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because many people want the devil cast off of them. And really what you need is you need your soul saved. You need your mind renewed. The enemy, now hear me now, the enemy can come in and influence your soulish realm. But if you will renew your mind with the word of God, it is preserved. It is made whole. It is made well, just like your spirit. I mean, you can get your mind so right that your mind is sealed, glory to God. Your mind is saved, but you can't do it. It's not going to happen just by having somebody lay hands on you. We do a disservice to some people by doing that. And especially if it is the enemy who is influencing and he might be adding some some fuel to the fire and we break the power over the enemy over them, but if they do not realize how to save their soul, if they don't realize how to take the word of God and put it in their life so that their mind, will, and emotions will become whole, then they will end up Sometimes the Bible even talks about seven times worse condition. Because the enemy comes and he brings back seven with him. He finds the house all swept and cleaned. You can be doing a disservice if you don't. If you do not get this right, because it's up to you. I wish that I could save your soul. I wish that God could save your soul. I wish that Jesus could save your soul. But only you can save your soul. And that's through hearing the word of God. We hear a lot about different things. I mean, I've heard, you know, uh, inner, inner healing. Do people need healing on the inside? Absolutely. But I believe this is the way it's going to come. It's going to become, it's going to come one way. And that's by hearing the word of God and receiving it, which is able to deliver your souls. You know, I, I was just seeking the Lord yesterday, and I believe this is what the Lord told me. He said, many people that are seeking inner healing, really what they have is they have unforgiveness. Oh, I had one welcome now. <laughs> it's real quiet when you hear things that heaven says. His word already gave you the answer. People need inner, inner healing from, 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 from things that happened in the past. I don't find one instance of it in the Bible. But I find forgive. I find not having ought. I find forget those things that are in the past and press forward. And many people, if they would just apply the word of God and renew the word of God to their mind and forgive that horrible situation. I'm not taking away from any kind of abuse or any kind of horrible thing that happened to you. Amen? But many people just need to forgive and they'll see as they apply that word of God, as they hear that word of God, that their souls will be delivered and will no longer have power. People, you can, you can take that right down. Any, any kind of instance you want to talk about, people that are in a fear. I believe that if you'll renew your mind with the word of God, amen, God will deal with, God will help you with your emotions. We've, we've embraced the world's ways of doing things. And the world ought to be embracing our way because our way works. Amen. 
See so how many people are how many people are bound up in this area, this 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 whole soulish realm. They're 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 just totally bound up in it. But yet God said that He wants to make you whole. He wants your emotions whole. He wants your mind whole. How's he going to do it? You're going to do it. How are you going to do it? You're going to receive the word of God. And you're going to meditate on the word of God and you're going to do the word of God. I mean, there's people there, they're, 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 they're handicapped and hindered in life. Because, of, I mean, I'm, I'm not taking away from the awful things that have happened. But the enemy, hear me, I'm talking about Christians. The enemy has used that as a point of entrance into your soulish realm. And as you yield, as you continue to yield to those, as you continue to yield to ought, as you continue to yield to unforgiveness, as you continue to yield to, to, to fear, as you continue to yield to the, all the flood of emotional feelings and relive the things that you went through that hurt you so bad, as you continue to do that, you have given an, an entrance to the enemy. And only you can close the door. Dare I go there, Lord? See, if you are a Christian and you're born again, everybody, you know, you, you hear this. Well, the devil made me do it. No, the, the devil influenced you, but you yielded. And you began to entertain what he was trying to get you to do before you ever did it. And you made a decision that I'm going to do it. And you went ahead and do it because God gave you a free will and you chose. You made a choice. The devil didn't make you do it. He influenced you. But the devil, as a born again Christian, can't make you do anything. It's almost been a cop out in the church. Just, just, you know, just pray for me and get the devil off my back. No, no, you need to put your flesh under. You need to renew your mind with the word of God. You need to save your souls if you want to walk a victorious life. We can get you free. We can even get you free. You might be oppressed. We can get you free. But if you're not going to do anything beyond that, guess what? He's going to come back with the same thoughts. He told Jesus that when Jesus resisted him in the temptation, it says that he departed, and New King James says, for a more opportune time. What's that mean? He's coming back. He's looking for another opportunity. So as a born-again Christian, you can't be possessed. God and the Holy Ghost ain't going to share the same, the, 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 the same abode. He didn't put up with it in heaven, and he ain't going to put it up with it on the inside of you, where he said the kingdom of God is within. Now, he can oppress you, but he can't possess you. And what I mean by possess is he cannot take you over and actually use your flesh and completely take over your mind, your will, and emotions, and use your flesh to do his, to, to do his bidding. Because you are sealed. I said you are sealed. Your spirit man is born again. You are sealed. But the devil can oppress you. The devil, the devil can bring sickness against your flesh. Amen. Not, not every sickness is, 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 is a spirit of infirmity, so to speak. There's Christians, they love Jesus, they're born again. But they've never done anything with their soul. And so the enemy, they've opened up the entrance by lack of the word. Receiving the word of God that's able to deliver their souls, make their soul whole, well, preserved. They've opened up the door. Sometimes it's through acts of the flesh that open up the door because the acts of the flesh are contrary to the word of God and you're yielding to the enemy. But very often is you have opened up the soulish realm. It's all right if I take a couple more minutes. You open up the soulish realm. That is the realm, the Bible says in Ephesians, that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. That's, that's out here in this unseen realm. That's where, that's where he's prince. He's the, he, he, he rules and he reigns in this earthly atmosphere out here as the prince in the power of the air. But he doesn't rule on the inside of your spirit. He wants to get from out here into here. He wants to get from out here, and especially if you're not saved, if you're not born again, you're not sealed. And so he can, if you will yield to him, and even unsaved people have to yield to him. Some of them do it innocently. They do it through the occult. They do it through seances. 
They do it through horoscopes. They do it through fortune tellers not realizing that they are opening up their spirit to an evil spirit. They're yielding to it. They're giving him entrance. They're giving him place. That's why the Bible says resist the devil and he has to flee. But out here, if we do not use the word of God, which he gave us to renew our souls, then we are opening. You're opening up that realm for the enemy. As a born-again Christian that loves Jesus, might even be a tongue talker. If you open up the realm of your soul, the enemy can come in and he can oppress you. Well, how, do we, how, how would I do that? Well, we talked about a couple things. Unforgiveness. Ought. Pride. I'm going to give you two more things and we're going to go home. The word devil is the word diablos. And that word has a lot of meaning. Dia means you pierce from one side all the way through to the other side. Now think of his job description. He wants to pierce you. The devil means to pierce through, and he wants to pierce all the way through. He just doesn't want to stick you. He wants to stick it all the way through you, from one side to the other. And that word bolos means this, to throw as like when someone throws a ball. So that's the enemy. He's got something, and his intention is he wants to throw it at you, and he wants it to go all the way through you, and he's going to throw it like a ball. So he's throwing something at you. And the intent is, whatever it is he's throwing at you, he doesn't want it just to stick. He wants it to go all the way through you. Let me say that again. He wants it to go all the way through you. So if you put that word together, it means to repetitiously throw something. Striking again and again and again until the object being struck has fully been penetrated. So the devil, he's got something that he's throwing at you. And he's going to throw it at you again and again and again, repetitiously. He's going to keep throwing it at you. And his intent is what he's throwing at you, he wants it to go all the way through you. 2 Corinthians 10, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now he's going to tell us how to pull down these strongholds. What's a stronghold? Well, we began to talk about that, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. The enemy wants to build strongholds in your life. Now notice he tells us that we can pull down these strongholds. That when the enemy has built strongholds in our life, that we as born again sealed in our spirit unto, unto the day of redemption, that we can make a determination, first of all, of whether it's ever going to become a stronghold to begin with. And you choose you choose on a daily basis. You choose on a thought-by-thought -thought basis of whether you're ever going to have a stronghold or not. You have to choose. So he says there's these strongholds, and yet we have these weapons. They're not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of these strongholds. And now, but notice this, that uh, we all like to think that the spiritual weapons... And that the spiritual weapons are out here, so to speak, and it's the name of Jesus, and I thank God we can use the name of Jesus, and it's the blood of Jesus, and I thank God we can use the blood of Jesus. But when you look at this, he's saying that this is a spiritual weapon, right? Because we have the ability to pull these strongholds, and these weapons are not carnal, they're not fleshly, they're spiritual. But notice it's spiritual in the context of that the way that we do this has to do with our soul. You pull it down, and it's through the realm of the soul. Because notice how these strongholds, what they are. He says, casting down imaginations. Well, where does imagination come from? Imagination's great. Thank God for imagination, but it has to be, it has to be God's imagination. 
It has to be things that you are imagining need to be thoughts that aren't coming from the devil. See, he will give you imaginations. He will make you imagine that you're going to drop dead at noon today. He will make you imagine that that pain in your body is, 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 is you know, it's going to be a death sentence to you. He will, he will, he will want you to imagine the, the, the wrecker pulling up and taking your car because you couldn't make the payment. He will want you to imagine all these different things. And you are the one. God can't do it for you. You have to take these imaginations and you have to cast them down. He said, casting down imaginations, and now notice this, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Notice he said it was a high thing. He's the prince of the power of this air. He said, you take these imaginations, you cast them down, and what are you looking for? You're looking for, how do you know, how do you know that you need to exercise what I'm talking about? Because it's a high thing and it exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Anytime you have a thought, because what does he say here to finish it up? And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought, you have to do something with it. You have to bring it into captivity. You have to cast down the imagination. And how do you know that it's a thought that you have to cast down? How do you know it's an imagination and it's something that you shouldn't be imagining? Because if it exalts itself against the knowledge of God, that is the factor, that is the standard right there. And you know that if it's contrary to God's plan and God's will, that you have no business thinking on it. You have no business letting your imagination wander and embrace it. Because when you do that, guess what? You are opening up your soulish realm. But how, then how can I keep my soulish realm closed except for only the things that God wants me to have? I'm so glad you asked. It starts where we begin. Bringing everything into captivity, imagination, every thought into captivity that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. It goes back to what we're saying. He, his attack is here. It's not here in your spirit, man. His attack is here. He wants to get into your mind, your will, and emotions. He wants to oppress you. If you're not born again, or if you just did flat, flatly say, Jesus, I'm done with you forever, and you walk away and tread a flesh, or trample afresh the blood of Jesus, then you can no longer have the Spirit of God might not long, be longer on the inside of you. That's a whole other thing that would take another service. But I got Bible for it. And you're not once saved, always saved. Okay, then. Glad most of you believe that. And so... What's he doing? He's looking for an entrance to oppress you in your mind, in your will, and your emotions, in your flesh. So how does he do it? He brings these thoughts, and he throws his thought. And now notice, what's his thought? His thought, he's not happy just to stick you. He wants it to go all the way through you. He don't want it just here. He wants it in here. And ultimately, where I'd really love to have it yeah. is here, in your spirit. So how do we do it then? We have to know the word of God to save our souls. Because this is how you know. The word of God, it's the standard. The word of God, when you've renewed your mind, when you've saved your soul, It's preserved. So what happens? A thought comes. But on the inside of you, through the Holy Spirit, and through your mind being renewed and in its agreement with your born-again spirit, a thought comes. Here comes the thought. And the first thing you should think when that thought comes, where did that thought come from? Did that come from God, or is that the devil? Or is that the flesh? But, here's the standard. Does that thought exalt itself? Is it lifting itself up over the knowledge of God's word? See, that's why you have to know the word. So that thought comes. Let's just use one. That thought comes. And here's this thought. And the thought is, you're never going to make it. 
You're going under. You're never going to have the provision that you need. They're coming to get your car. They're going to repossess your house. And here comes the thought. And you have to determine right there, am I going to yield to this? Because you know what that thought's going to bring you? It's going to steal your peace. It's going to steal your joy. It's going to bring you fear. And we know because we know the word of God. We have the word of God. We've renewed our minds. Our soul is saved. We've got the armor of God on us. Amen. We've got the word of God on the inside of us, and we've got it in our mouth. And we know when that thought comes that right then and there we have to make a judgment. Do I think on that thought? And your little warning device should be going, mm, 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 beep, 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 incoming thought, incoming thought, incoming thought, and your radar ought to already be picking it up. And when that thought comes and that thought says you're going under, you're never going to make it, then you have to take that thought and not even imagine not making it. Not even imagine that you're going to go under. Isn't that what the Bible says? Not let your mind paint you a picture, not let your soul paint a picture. If your soul is not renewed, if your mind is not renewed, if your soul is not saved, you will have a picture, and it will be a Picasso, I'm telling you. But if you've got the Word of God, and you've renewed your mind, and you right off the bat, your radar picked up against the knowledge of God, what do you say? You say, ah, how do I know it's against the knowledge of God? I'm going to tell you thought. My God says... That I am blessed coming in and I am blessed going out. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm going over and I'm not going under. And my Bible says my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. So thought, I'm not even going to imagine that. I'm not, this is what steals people's faith. I'm not even going to think about that any longer. I cast you down. This works in every area. Sickness, symptoms against our body, lack. Relationships. We're blessed by this broadcast and receive something good from the Lord. If you'd like to know more about this ministry, you can find us on the World Wide Web at waterlooworshipcenter.com.